gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, Teddy's at home, and we're here at the Playtech TV studio where I host the other show that I host, Playtech TV, uh, because I'm doing the AMD Fury X a day and I had to come down here to do this video, so hence why we're here. However, let's get on with it then and talk about this new graphics card. So it's featuring the new 28 nanometer Fiji XT GPU based on the GCN 1.2 architecture with a reference clock speed of 1050 megahertz. And this is going to be AMD's flagship card. This is going to be their highest card, well, for now anyways. Uh, so I'm expecting some pretty heavy performance coming out of this guy. Now it features 4,096 shader units. Now if we compare that to the 390X, what I'm going to be comparing this guy to today, uh, the 390X has 2,816 shader units on that Grenada or Hawaii GPU that it has. Now it has 64 ROPs, that's the same as the 390X. It has 8.9 billion transistors compared to the 6.2 billion of the 390X. It features a 275 watt TDP, so that's exactly the same as the 390X, however, uh, we're definitely going to be getting more performance per watt out of the Fury X. Now it features 4 gigabytes of memory, so at first a lot of people were like, wow, only 4 gigabytes, but this is HBM, or high bandwidth memory. Um, so AMD's been working on this for seven years. It's very kind of a new thing, uh, and it's very cool, and I really like where AMD's been going with this. It really is the future. So it's got a 94% smaller surface area than GDDR5, which is pretty amazing, and it has a lower power consumption and an ultra-wide bus width. So basically, I'm going to keep this simple for you guys. So basically, it works. Um, by the memory being stacked on the GPU die. Uh, so the everything's sitting on an interposer and basically it's all built up from there, kind of like a, a skyscraper with its different uh, stories. So the memory is stacked that way. It's very close to the GPU, which is good, and it also takes up a smaller amount of area. Uh, so that's what gives you your high bandwidth and a fantastic power efficiency of HBM. So this guy has an incredible 4096-bit bus when you compare that to the 390X, which only has a 512-bit bus. It's pretty crazy, which gives you the insane memory bandwidth of 512 gigabytes a second, which is just absolutely crazy. And you compare that to the 384 gigabytes a second of the 390X, and you just see you know, HBM really is the future. This guy is absolutely crazy. Now in terms of I.O., I was a little less than impressed. So there's no DVI, which some people might be a little bit grumpy about. Um, it does feature three uh, DisplayPort 1.2 outputs, so that's pretty cool. And a single HDMI, but this is HDMI 1.4, not 2.0, although I've been told there is an adapter uh, going to be coming out later. Uh, but that's a big letdown for a lot of people who wanted to you know, do 4K at 60 hertz. You're going to be limited to 4K at 30 hertz with this guy, so that's a bit of a letdown. Now up top we see that it has uh, two 8-pin power connectors and a crossfire works just like the 390X. It goes through the PCI rather than uh, through fingers at the top, so that's quite cool. It also has these LEDs uh, by the power connectors and that kind of shows you the GPU load, which is quite cool. I like that. You can change the color as well. Uh, so that's really cool and a nice feature. Now let's dive into the benchmarks then and see how this Fury X does against the 390X.
those benchmarks, the Fury X just absolutely destroys the 390X at every resolution. 1080p, 4040p, 4K, it just leaves it in the dust. Now, if you're worried that the uh, four gigabytes of the Fury X might not be enough, um, in Shadow of Mordor at 4K, it was the maximum memory usage I saw was 3.6 gigs. So that's getting up there, but I mean, that's at 4K and Shadow of Mordor, which is a very high requirement game. Uh, so I think four gigs is, you know, enough for now. And especially if you're only going to be gaming at, say, 1080p, which has got to be super overkill for, or uh, 1440p, uh, that, that'll be plenty. So that's just fine. However, performances and everything, what about temperatures? As you can see, this has an all-in-one liquid cooler, uh, which is quite cool. It has a, uh, it's made by Cooler Master. It has this nice fan on the back, uh, which is you know really quiet, so that's good too. And I've, I've liked this. I've been wondering for a while why more companies haven't been doing this since you know um, CPU water cooling is so common nowadays, well, at least in, th in the enthusiast community, uh, why they haven't done this. But this is just an absolutely awesome setup, as uh, you can see, or you can probably tell. It's a 120 millimeter rad on this guy. Um, so during the Unigen Valley benchmark, I was looking for the highest temperatures and the highest fan speed, and the Fury X went up to 45 degrees Celsius, which is very, very low, and only at 16% fan speed, so that's incredible. When you compare it to the 390X, which went up to 78 degrees Celsius at 45% fan speed, and that's the DirectCU2 uh, 390X. So yeah, uh, very good in terms of temps. Of course you would assume it would be considering this has an all-in-one uh, liquid cooler with it. It's very nicely sleeved as well. I just really like this setup. It's um, absolutely fantastic. A lot of you are probably more aware of it now that quite a few reviews have been out of this guy. But I really like it and um, you know I'll, I think other cards will start doing this in the future, you know, reference cards. Now let's talk about noise. So this has been a little bit controversial with this guy. Um, Obviously, fan noise is going to be non-existent. It was completely silent. Uh, there's barely any fan noise. I'm sure in the majority of cases out there, you're going to be hearing more of your case fans uh, than you will be of this cooler. So it did very good in that sense. Uh, you get a bit of pump noise with this guy, though. So a bit of um, high-pitched kind of pump noise, I found. Uh, this shouldn't be the biggest issue if you have it in a closed off case. Um, a lot of people are blowing this out of proportion, making it be, seem like it's a big thing. And uh, from what I know, Cooler Master is aware of this, who make this uh, liquid cooling unit, and uh, they're making some changes to make sure that's not the case in the future. Uh, however, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It wasn't really too distracting or anything. And if you have your case, you know, like under your desk or anything like that, and it's, a, you know, got some noise isolation in the case, then uh, it should be just fine. You won't notice anything. So noise-wise, it is absolutely perfect. At idle, there's no noise. And on low, there's very little noise at all, especially from the fans. Uh, and so it's way, way, way quieter than the 390X. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and don't worry, I will be doing a GPU showdown with this guy in the future, probably in a little while um, after they've revised maybe a few things on it, as I said with the um, pump and that. But uh, yeah, I really want to do this again in the future and do a showdown against the 980Ti, so I'll definitely be doing that once this guy's on uh, more updated drivers as well. I think we'll see a big difference there. However, I think this looks uh, absolutely sexy, all the lighting up radeon and uh, the uh, GPU usage indicator on the side. That's really cool. I really like it. It just looks fantastic. It's fresh. I like it. NVIDIA definitely should have done something like this with the reference 980 Ti. Now, HBM is definitely the future, and that really pulls this cut ahead. And uh, as I said earlier, 4 gigabytes should be enough for like the majority of users out there. I don't see that many people thinking that's not enough. Uh, so truly, believe me, 4 gigabytes is a good amount for it right now. And this is definitely the top AMD card. As you can see, it just blew the 390X out of the water. And uh, this will be really good going forward as well with DirectX 12. I think this guy is really going to pull ahead. So I am impressed by the Fury X, and I think it's going to continue to impress people uh, further down the road. Just for right now, some people, um, I think just where the drivers are at and a few things, maybe thinking it's not really good enough. But, but let's see in the future. And as I said, I'll do a GPU showdown further down the road, and we'll see how it does then. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.